Let's have a look at the latest information about Bitlickenhaus 007 after its first test drive. The car looks mostly like the renderings and wind tunnel pictures, but a few features are different. Let's start at the front. The front wing section has a raised center section now, and the car has longer and higher dive planes. The headlights are bigger, and the wheel arch louvers are a bit more porous and offer more exit area. The mirrors change to a more stable design, and the stalks are positioned further inboard. The car does not feature the small air intake in the upper rearward wheel arch anymore, but it has a separate duct for the rearward brake cooling. One of the most interesting parts is the large rear assembly. We can see the center pillar which mounts to the rear wing from below and a large gurney flap which runs all the way around the trailing edge. This gives a bit more downforce, supports the rear wing and improves the cooling because the engine bay exit is just below it. Also we can see a low downforce rear wing with a raised outboard leading edge to reduce induced drag. One thing to notice on this rear assembly is the lower split line. You would usually split an underbody of a race car before the diffuser section and avoid having split lines within suction areas. Here it looks like Blickenhaus split the rear part within the diffuser. The problem with that is that the alignment of such a large assembly is very important. If it's not exactly right, you can create gaps or steps which could disrupt the diffuser airflow and cause separations. To make sure the alignment is as good as possible, they added a number of alignment joggles around the rear. So it all depends on the assembly tolerances, if this rear part can go on easily or not. Another challenge with such a solution is that there is definitely a split line in the diffuser and even if it does align perfectly, you will want to cover the split line to avoid unnecessary disruptions to the flow. You could do this with wax, but it won't last for very long because this is a suction area and the low pressure will simply pull the wax out of the gap after a while. Or what teams usually do is to tape the split line. But tape can have folds, can come off after a while, so there's always a risk. It would be interesting to see the complete floor section of the car and how they solve this. A very interesting feature are the vertical fins on the pressure side of the rear wing. Glickenhaus says they are there for horizontal stabilization and it allows them to run a smaller shark fin. To me, it looks like the shark fin could be bigger. Anyway, they say this concept gives them less drag and that's what matters for Le Mans. The first time someone looked into vertical fins to make the car faster was when ProDrive's technical director David Lepworth thought that it would be a good idea to add vertical fins to the WRC Subaru rear wing. Because of the high yaw angles of rally cars, these fins create a significant side force at the very back of the car, which tries to push the car back into a straight position. The result was that you can drift even faster with them and rally teams use them until today. And for Lickenhaus, it's a unique feature that people talk about. How do you like the new Lickenhaus hypercar? Let me know in the comments below.